Hey guys, I'm going to show you guys a quick production example of how to do some constraints. So I use this on a day-to-day -day basis quite a lot and it saved me a lot of time in the past, especially when you need to constrain a ton of objects and it's super handy to have a quick little script like this that does it for you. So I've got a locator here right in the middle of the uh, the scene and then I've got a bunch of different cubes you know kind of scattered around in the scene and I want all these cubes to follow this locator so I want them all to be constrained to this one guy so to do it manually you know you would select your locator and then the cube and then you know you create a constraint like this now it's constrained and then you can just continue by hitting G on the keyboard to create the constraint on all these cubes here and now it's done and that's that's pretty much how you do it manually so I, I want to do this programmatically and the way to do that is to use a for loop so what we can do is if we just type import maya.cmds as cmds to have access to all the maya commands we need to store our selection so I can do ls sl is equal to true and this will store our selection so when I run this and I just take a look at cell you can see we've got our locator there and then what we need to do now is we need to loop over all our selected objects but I want to disregard the first selection so you know when you do a constraint you select the first object and then you select uh, the second object and you do the constraint well now instead of just selecting one uh, object to do the constraint on we can select multiple and then just constrain all of them but we want to skip the first object because that's our parent object. So what we can do is we can do a for loop. So I can say for i in cell. And here's the, uh, here's the part where it matters the most. We want to skip the first object. So we don't want to just loop over an entire, like our entire selection, which is uh, just cell there. So if we just did this and I just print i to see what we're looping over, you can see we've got our locator in there. And to take out the locator, what we can actually do is we can use a slice. So I want to show you guys what a slice is quickly. So if I just come down here and and I just say one, you know, this will be our second object, P cube, you know, six, which is this guy here. But I don't want P cube six. And, you know, I, I want to just get the entire um, list of objects after the first. So to do that, you can use the colon the, uh, the little colon symbol and what that does is it'll just go from one all the way to the end of the list. So let's run this and you can kind of see what happens. Let's select just this line. Now run it. Now you can see we have a list of all the cubes but it doesn't have the locator in there. So if I put this from zero to the end, what this will do is just basically give me the entire list. So it's everything all the way to the end of the list. But I can also do some cool things like negative one. So I want everything from the beginning. And you don't even need to put the zero there. If you want to go from the beginning to a given number, you can just like leave it empty. So if I run this, you can see it's giving me a list, but it's kind of taking the last item out. So negative one does that. And if I put negative two, it'll take out the last two items in the list. You can see now the last two are gone. So that's basically how you use slices. It's a very handy thing, but I just want to go from the beginning. So I can say, um, I don't want to from the beginning, actually, I want to go from you know, index one, which is our second selection all the way to the end. And I can leave that empty and that will give me um, in a, a list without the locator in there. So I want to do that here. So I'll go one to the end. Now I can delete this. And now if I run this, you can see there's no locator in there. That's great. Now I can do cmds parent constraint. And then what do I want to, what do I want to constrain? I want to constrain my, I want my first selection to be the parent and the second, uh, second object to be whatever we're iterating over. So, you know, it'll be starting from there and it will just go through and constrain them all together. So last thing I want to do is just maintain offset. MO is equal to true. And that's all you need to do. And now if I run this, you can see they're all constrained to this guy. And then I can throw this code on the shelf. Now it's there. 
and it's uh, ready to roll. So if I have a bunch of extra cubes, I'm just gonna duplicate these guys and move them over here. Just a ton of cubes like this. What I can do is just grab this and then grab all these other cubes and then hit the button and now they're all constrained up to this locator. And that just saves you having to do it manually and that's why it's saved me so much time over the years. And there's a way to write this in a more intelligent way, which is what I'm going to go through next um, in the next lesson, which is a much more advanced way to write this code, which kind of checks some locked attributes and things like that. And, you know, it's a much better way to do it. So just showing you guys an example, I've got this rig here in my scene and, you know, like the pole vectors here are locked. So my translates are locked and I mean, my rotations and my scales are locked and my translates unlocked. So if I wanted to constrain to this, if I create a locator and I grab my locator and then I grab this pole vector and I try to do a parent constraint, it's gonna error out because it's gonna say, hey, the uh, the rotation X is locked. And that's, um, that's why I can't do the parent constraint. You know, so what I can do is I can do a parent constraint, but I can uncheck this rotate. And now it will create a parent constraint so I can still rotate this and it will move along with it. But now you can see it's actually worked and I didn't need to do the rotations there. So how do we do this programmatically? Well, I'm gonna go through in the next lesson how to check if an attribute is locked and if it is locked, it'll change this parent constraint command to another one, um, which is kind of like what we did here. We just uncheck that rotation. So yeah. Make sure you stick around for the next lesson where I go through the much more advanced version. I kind of clean up this code a little bit, make it a function and then, uh, you know, do some cool things. Yeah. So stick around. Mm -hmm.